Hey guys, Pastor Kent here, and I'm with the lovely Hannah. And I'm kind of excited about today's podcast because we're going to be talking about politics and the whole new election cycle that's coming up. And one of the most important things I know you're probably thinking in the back of your head, this is probably the bluest state in the entire country. There's no way we're going to win this election for the Republican candidate if we're conservatives. We have no hope. And I want to tell you, you're probably right. God can do a miracle. He hasn't done one in 20 years, so it's a long one in coming if it is, but that's not my point. The point is the presidential election is the least important election. The most important election is your local city council, your local school board, your county city council, or whoever those guys are called, assemblymen, I think is what they're called. They might have a name, superintendents, that's what they, county superintendent election, and the county board of education, and probably the single most important that will impact your life is the county sheriff because the sheriff determines whether the laws are going to be enforced and how they're going to be enforced. I'll give you an example. During COVID, you had Jack Hibbs up in Chino who was able to keep his church open because the county sheriff said he would not enforce the COVID lockdown mandates. And that meant he was, Pastor Hibbs was able to open his church and would not have to face any kind of prosecution. Whereas in San Jose, the Calvary Chapel in that st- city was actually taken to jail and was had charges filed against him and had made a huge, huge court battle that went on for a long time, cost thousands and thousands of dollars. They eventually prevailed, but you see the difference. If you don't have the local authorities behind you, then these, we will say, draconian, illegal laws will be enforced against you until you can win the court case, and that is what happens. So the most important thing you can do is have a voice and an influence in the local elections, what's happening in your city, what's happening in your county, who's the sheriff, make sure those guys are all on the same team, thinking the same way that you are, and you'll get the benefit of the doubt. I want to give a bad example, and then we're going to get into the details of what we're going to talk about today. Think of Sanctuary City. That just means the city councils and those cities say we're not going to enforce federal law. We're going to let illegals come in. We're going to let them roam around the streets. We're going to let them do whatever they want. There's nothing you can do, and there's nothing they can do because this is known as the theory of law of the the lowest magistrate. In other words, the one closest to you, the person who works for the government that's closest to you, has the greatest influence over your life. And yeah, you can fight it, and you can go to you can go to court, and it's going to take a really long time and a whole lot of money. And part of the ways that uh, uh, let's say an overbearing government is able to impose itself is to make it legally so cost prohibitive that you just knuckle under to the regulation rather than fight it because you just don't have the money to fight it. It'll bankrupt you. And that's one of the things that they can do. So you want to make sure you have your influence in the local elections. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what's going on in Huntington Beach and in Orange County. So Hannah, what's on your list? Well, we're starting to see those signs populate all over Huntington Beach. Vote yes, vote no. But it's important to know what those signs are actually referring to. And I'm so glad you brought up, we do live in a blue state. And it's sad when it comes to state elections and, and the presidential election. But there are specific measures that are coming up on the in the primaries on March 5th that we can vote for that will impact our community here in Huntington Beach. Okay, so March 5th, big day, important yes. for local Huntington Beach residents. Yes, we can't overlook these primaries. This is when we're we're setting forth uh, county supervisors, when we're setting forth judges, and specifically ballot measures, which is the one I wanted to bring up today. Okay, let me ask a question. I'm going to cut in. Yeah. You have your stuff on that. How in the world do I know a good judge? How do I find that out? Where yep. do I look? Well, there's a ton of resources online, but we're I would, not talking about them today. We're I would, we're not going to talk about them today, but you can come on February 12th Where? Um, to our political impact team meeting here at Beach City's Community Church. We're going to have wow. a list of conservative Christian judges that are running not only in Huntington Beach, but the greater Orange County area as well for those awesome. that attend our church, but might not live in these zip codes. So more information on judges and supervisors then. But today I had some more information on some ballot measures. That okay, up. let's do it. Let's yes. hit it. Well, our former mayor, Tony Strickland, he actually proposed three um, ballot measures, uh, but measures A, B, and C. And what that what they are specifically for is to change our city charter. So okay. you mentioned we live in a blue state, but what's super unique about changing a city charter is that the city can now function to its own prerogative despite what the state might mandate. So, you know, we see cities like San Francisco, see cities like Sacramento, see cities like Los Angeles, sanctuary cities pushing social agendas. Huntington Beach, through these amendments, we can actually buy 
bifurcate away from the way the rest of our state is functioning and actually secure some independent freedoms down here locally. So Okay, here's what I understand. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Yeah. Okay. I understand that the city of Huntington Beach has a charter set up constitution for its city. Yes. Which is different than most of the other cities in the state. Yes. And that it gives it residents of Huntington Beach a special prerogative or lever or legal angle in which they can resist the authority of the state yep. written into their agreement with the state when they became a chartered city. Yep. And we get to take advantage of that. We can modify that any way we want. Yeah. Correct? That's exactly what Tony Strickland wanted to do when he proposed these measures, was find ways for the city to function in a way that actually preserves the freedoms of its residents and promotes the well-being of the residents despite the state prerogative. Awesome. This is awesome. And so what are these issues that he put on the ballot? So Measure A has to all uh, everything to do with election integrity. So I was Great. actually going to read this uh, read to it, you guys. Read it. So that way we're, we're getting it word for word here. So um, the Measure A would provide commencing in 2026 for all municipal elections in the city may require voter identification for elections, provide more in-person voting locations and monitor ballot drop boxes. Nice. So these drop boxes aren't just stuffed. Exactly. Because they're being monitored. And then ID? ID as well. What, you have to what, have an ID to vote. Does it say what type of ID it'll take? It doesn't specify that. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like a high school ID if I'm an 18 year old kid? <laughs> and, and it, student body ID? Yeah. License? Driver's license, student ID, federally issued ID, passport, any sort of identification that proves you are the person that is on your ballot. That's nice. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah. It's important, especially after everything we've seen, especially oh, yeah. even in Dinesh D'Souza's 2000 Mules uh, movie. Right. With the ballot harvesting that's going on, with um, uh, mules just stuffing ballots into these boxes is dead people voting in some cases. Right. You can go down the rabbit hole of instances across the nation where we're seeing election integrity be, being abused. And yeah. it's actually discouraged voters from turning out in recent years. And specifically in primaries or smaller elections that might not be for a president, people that might not care about voting for right. their city supervisor or for their sheriff because they might say, eh, my voice doesn't matter. But again, this it goes does. back to our city can function independent of the state and we can protect election integrity here at home. That's great. And and you know what? That makes this election super important. Yeah. Because then we can't be flooded a with a bunch of illegal battle uh, ballots if you have to be show ID. This is going to be great. Yeah. That's a, that makes this a really important election. So it's Absolutely. March what? March 5th. March 5. Okay, great. What's yep. the next one you got? So Measure B. So this one provides that the only flags be displayed by the city on city property shall be the United States flag, the state of California flag, the county of orange orange flag, the city of Huntington Beach flag, the prisoners of war MIA flag, the sixth armed forces flag, and the Olympic flag, Olympic flag during the Summer Olympic Games, and any other flag should the city council have a unanimous vote. So essentially, this is saying no more social agenda flags, no more like the BLM flags, flag, BLM or flag, the gay flag. flag. We're not flying that on city property. Can we fly the church flag on city property? So that would fall. So. That's a great question. That would have to be approved unanimously by the city council. So it's treating everything outside of government ordained flags the exact same. So I'm getting the same treatment as the BLM flag. Exactly. That's what it should be. Yes. And I shouldn't be doing the church flag. It, it doesn't belong on the prop public property. And neither is BLM flag. So I'm happy that both of them are not going to be there. Yeah. That's and a great law. So this can only be basically the federal government, the state government, the county government, the city government, the U.S. Olympics once every four years, and the military. That's basically what can be flown on the city property, which is basically the pier and the other downtown area. It's a no-nonsense ballot measure that That's removes great. social agendas outside of city buildings. There's That's no great. reason why we should be pushing for a social movement, a religious movement, anything right. of that sort by government officials on government property, right. on tax pay taxpayer dollars that are funding these buildings and funding these government jobs. Yeah. We should be flying the government flags. On which the represents property. all of us. Yeah. Exactly. And, and even our church flag doesn't represent everybody in the city, so it shouldn't be up there. Exactly. That's Free great. for all. Yeah, I love it. So the last measure, so the first two, as you could probably guess, are the ones that are going to get the most backlash. Uh, a lot of people don't want election integrity. A lot of people don't want the removing of flags such as maybe the BLM or the pride flag. Measure C is actually a little bit more neutral and it's actually garnering pretty pretty fair support. It, it's, uh, it makes a ton of sense. It's it's called C. Here. Measure C. It is going to be in 2026, require the city to adopt a two-year budget, update the How about procedures. that, a budget. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. <laughs> update the procedures to cancel a regular city council meeting and update the process to fill a city council vac vacancy and amend outdated phrases, syntax, dates, pronouns, et cetera. 
Um, essentially, it's just ensuring that our city is running on a more functional schedule. If we have a city council schedule, we're not going to waste taxpayer dollars of gathering the entire city council to meet over essentially a non non a non-agenda, non-real non-important issue. meeting. So the the mayor will have the unilateral ability to cancel those meetings. Uh, they're regularly scheduled, um, I believe, once a month as of right now. But um, should Gracie want to do so, she's going to be our new, uh, she's our new mayor. She can cancel those meetings so there's nothing on the agenda, save money, to save taxpayer dollars, as well as the implementation of the budget, which is always a good thing. Yeah. Can she add more meetings if necessary? I I have. It says nothing about that in the text. I would assume that means so. There's We've heard of special hearings before if a right. new ballot measure gets proposed, um, if there's something that needs immediate addressing. We've seen this in other city councils where they've added in meetings. I'm sure that that would extend under her her power in that regard. But the the text of the ballot does not say that. There, so I, she I, just I, has I, a I right say that. to cancel a, a scheduled meeting if there's no agenda. Exactly. That makes sense. Keep things efficient yeah. and then clean up the verbiage and the, and, the, yeah. and the paperwork. Keeping things clean in the city charter. Okay, great. So what do you recommend on all of this? Yes, yes, and yes? I would say yes, yes, and yes. I mean, I want to know my vote counts. I want to know that, you know, dead people aren't voting or we're not <laughs> stuffing ballot boxes. Right. I want to know if I want, you know, a Christian representing me here in Huntington Beach as the supervisor or as the sheriff. I want to know that my ballot counts. Right. And I also want to know the government officials aren't playing social games of which flag flags. we get raised on a tax right. taxpayer building. Yeah, keep it simple. Exactly. Yes, the government flags that represent the, all of us. Exactly. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And the last one is clean up the Constitution so that it uh, gives a little bit more power to the mayor on exactly. holding meetings in an efficient manner and clean up the verbiage. Exactly. They're all great three measures, all proposed by Tony. Um, now Tony Strick- Strickland, Strickland, the outgoing mayor. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. So March 5th, make sure you mark your calendars. Don't overlook all that ballot information that's coming in the mail. I know it's easy. A lot of us keep our eyes to November for the election, especially since this is a presidential um, year. year. But the primaries are so, so important. And there's tons more that we're not even covering today as far as judges, other ballot measures, school boards, city councils are involved. And there's tons more opportunity to learn about it. And I'd love to throw in a shameless plug here for you guys to come out, like I said previously, on February 12th. We have a political Great. impact team here at Beach Cities Community Church. And we're actually going to be bringing in all, all the candidates we can to talk about what is their platform, what are their values, and how you can actually get involved. I, I know our church specifically has done a lot in educating people about their constitutional freedoms and about why it's important to be gauge, engaged in the public sphere. Right. But this is the year to actually go out there and do something. Maybe do door knocking. Maybe do some mailers. Maybe volunteer a couple hours a week for a local candidate just to help them win that local race. That's like great. Like said, it all starts here at home. Yeah. I heard a rumor. Tell me if it's true. We're going to be putting together a team of legal <laughs> ballot harvesters Keyword this year. legal. Yes, the, that is According true. to the, the legal requirements. But we're going to be doing that. Is that accurate? Yes, we are. Well, we're going to have to have another podcast to talk about that and Absolutely. the other things and the other candidates and all of that. So our takeaway from this particular podcast today is be at the... February 12th meeting. Where at? Here at Beach Cities Community Church. In the... Auditorium from <laughs> 6 to 8 p.m. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Hannah. And I hope this was helpful for all of you guys.